Teenagers who've been forced to sit through Wagner's ring cycle behave much as markets did today after the 17-hour showdown of Europe's leaders and a total surrender by Greece. A little polite applause and a request to go home now, please. Eurozone shares rose just 1.5%. The euro fell against the dollar and Italian and Spanish 10-year bond spreads over Germany, a measure of riskiness, actually rose a little. Now, it would be easy to overanalyse these moves. The simple story is that relief was already factored in. Eurozone bank shares, as an example, up a tenth from Wednesday to Friday last week as investors anticipated a Greek capitulation. They rose further today, suggesting that shareholders think the final deal is likely to be signed off by the Greek parliament when it discusses it this week. Now, the euro's weakness was a good sign as investors switched their focus back to the US and the prospects for tighter monetary policy from the Federal Reserve with no Greek crisis to worry about anymore. They also borrowed again in euros in order to place bets elsewhere, something that they'd been uh, cutting back on as they were worrying about uh, problems in Greece and taking their risky bets off the table, meaning that the euro actually rose. Italian and Spanish spreads rose slightly today, but as you can see from the Spanish spread here in blue, that came after they'd already been dropped back a very long way during last week's build-up of hope. So this might be profit-taking as much as disappointment at the final shape of the deal. But there are genuine reasons to be disappointed. Greek politics is unlikely to be able to withstand for that long the complete reversal, not only of the government's electoral platform, but also the result of the referendum, suggesting that more turmoil is likely at some point. Equally, insisting that Greek government debts are repaid in full leaves the economy and banking system to bear the brunt of adjustment, so the Greek economy is likely to drop even further into depression as reforms are forced through. Overall, though, it looks like European shares have already enjoyed most of their Greek bounce. You can see the uh, green line on here shows the Greek 10-year bond yield as the latest set of fears developed since February, with a long, slow uh, rise in the yield, followed by immediate disaster uh, in, in the past uh, six weeks or so, uh, as people really began to panic about default. Against that, we've got both Eurozone and US shares in dollar terms, so that we net out the big swings we've seen in the Euro. That's the uh, red and blue lines there, with the red being the Eurozone stocks. Now, as Greek worries intensified, the yield rose, that crisis there, and European shares sold off very, very strongly. Simplistically, it looks like there's now scope for a little bit more gain if that was to fall all the way back and then to get a little bit more gain in the European stocks. If, of course, the latest uh, discussions lead to a final deal over the next week or so. But relative to US stocks, the Eurozone's made back all its losses. You can see that's now back above the uh, 100 mark that I rebased that to, um, and actually outperforming US shares uh, a little bit um, uh, since that problem began, uh, and that's priced to the peaks in February. One has to believe that European shares should be performing better in order to justify uh, European stocks having beaten the US over the period of Greek problems. Now, there are good reasons to think that Europe should do better in the medium term. It has depressed profit margins, which should rise back towards normal levels, and US shares may well be hit by higher interest rates and a stronger dollar. But, of course, all of these remain in the realm of hope. Still, after watching the gods of Northern Europe put the Greek mortals in their place, investors prefer a tune that they can hum.